Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I am Kathy Groover. And Jason, I don't know about you, but I don't know if you've ever found yourself just sort of burnt out a little bit tired. Maybe you find yourself saying yes to too many things. You're really knowing that you should say no and take a break. And we just don't, right? We just sort of power through and do the thing. I don't, I'm sure you've never experienced that at all. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I never have that stuff happen. No. For like maybe right now. Yeah. No, (laughs) me neither. I'm not, I'm not completely book balls to the wall either. So yeah. Um, I know both of us run our own businesses. We see clients, we have our own practices for lack of a better term and and you know and and we can burn out from that and especially now post covid things are back online and things are happening and i'm back to traveling and it's uh it can be overwhelming and i'm hearing a lot of my clients specifically my coaching clients go i just can't seem to say no why do i keep finding myself in this pattern of being overbooked and too busy so that's what we're going to talk about today some solutions to give yourself a little bit of a break so that you can be productive and on task without being blown out yeah because i think i think we a lot of times you know especially if you're an overachiever and the fact that you're listening to podcasts when you don't have to probably means that you're an overachiever <laughs> like the two of us are right and and i think a lot of times it's it's so easy for us to get caught in the trap of thinking we're important or we're doing important things if we're busy all the time. And so, you know, most of us equate a lot of times our self-worth. I know I've, I've done this where, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm so important because look how busy I am. Right. And a lot of people wear that as a badge of courage or when they, when they start to feel tired and they start to, to feel that passion kind of go away a lot of times we've been taught, well, you just got to push through. And sometimes that's the thing that leads to burnout. When sometimes we do just need to take a little bit of a pause and realize, you know what, it's okay. If I don't answer those emails for a day, nothing's going to happen. It's okay. If I clear my calendar one morning a week and I go to the beach because I need to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because sometimes that's what we need more. We don't need more doing. We do not need more doing and we do need more being. And to quote Eckhart Tolle, can we find the being in the doing? We have to do. I mean, we have to put our pants on and leave the house and go make a living and pay the rent and pay the mortgage. And, you know, we, we do live in a society where we have to do those things. And how can we do it in such a way that we're not driving ourselves crazy and burning ourselves out? Because there is such a thing as compassion fatigue. And being that I still, I mean, my practice is probably, I think I'm maybe at 50, 50 or 60, 40 of massage and coaching. And then there's all the travel with the, the, the speaking and the writing. That's a whole separate thing. And this week I found myself having five clients a day which I haven't had in a while from a desire to not have five clients a day. But this week, for some reason, I had five clients every day and it was a beautiful mix. It was a beautiful mix of massage and coaching. But I still found at the end of every day, I came home and was like, oh my God, I'm just exhausted because the coaching stuff's emotional. That's emotionally and intellectually draining. And the massage is physically and emotionally and intellectually draining because everyone talks to me on the table. So I feel like I'm still kind of coaching, even though they're, you know, laying face down and not, not sitting across from me in the chair. So it's like, and again, I've had so many clients say, how can I, I got to say no more. Um, and a couple of things that popped into mind as we talked beforehand about doing the show was, you know, some people have the saboteur of the pleaser where they feel like they can't say no to things. Uh, some people have that past thing where they find their, Uh, validation and identity through achieving, through being very busy. This is my Capricorn that we've talked about. You know, as long as I stay busy, I can't perish. Uh, And sometimes it's guilt, you know, and the fourth one, let's be realistic. Sometimes there's a shit ton of work to do. You know, sometimes there is a workload. Maybe there's a project that's due. Maybe there's a deadline where you do have to power through and work. Um, And so one of the things I encourage people to do is rather than waiting for that one vacation a year, 
or that uh, finally I have a weekend free, make sure you're taking little breaks throughout the day. And maybe that's five minutes of meditation. Maybe it's stretching. Maybe it's lying on the floor and staring at the lights. Maybe it's walking around the building. You've got to find a way to take daily breaks to make sure you're not burning yourself out. So that's, that was my first little tip of what to do to make sure you don't lose your mind. Yeah. Cause I think, you know, a lot of times, I mean, I've, I've seen that too, or even, you know, this week, like, you know, what was it? Wednesday of this week from, from literally 10 o'clock in the morning until four o'clock, six hours straight, I was on calls, mm-hmm. right? I, I had just enough time to get up and go to the toilet, pretty much come back. Yep. At, at the end of that time, I was exhausted, right? Um, because again, like you said, coaching calls, you know, other things like that can be, are emotionally draining for the coach as well. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, like you said, taking those little breaks, and we've talked about this before on the podcast, you know, about taking little breaks, um, you know, trying to, you know, make sure that you're putting some blocks of time during your day, so you can go for that walk, or you can, you know, sit in meditation for five minutes, or breathe, or, you know, do some different things to kind of break it up and at least get up out of your chair. Yes that will help as well but you know what i think is interesting and like you you were saying there's a lot of people saying how come i can't say no and so maybe we need to go there a little bit too Mm -hmm. because a lot of times you know we (laughs) i think it was was warren buffett i think that said you don't have to do lists you have don't do lists kind of a thing right and it's like um, you know, we need to learn how to say no, because most of us, again, that are overachievers, will try yeah. to overcommit ourselves. Mm-hmm. And if we overcommit ourselves, then we don't get all of our shit done. Yep. And if we don't get all of our shit done, then again, as overachievers, we start being hard on ourselves. We yeah. start saying bad things about ourselves oh jason you're so stupid you can't do this how come you didn't get that done look you lied to that person because you told him it would be here by the end of the day and it's been three days right and so there's there's this this subtlety to the whole thing of by trying to be so busy that you can't get everything done Uh you're actually beating yourself up more then if you would just slow the fuck down yep. and tell people, no, I'm sorry, I'm not available for that, or I can't do that this week. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 And it's, and I finding myself doing that, you know, I had a call from a client who sounded fascinating, just had back surgery, wanted to help with the rehab. I would have to come to the house. And I was like, mm, I don't really do that anymore. And then I said, well, where in town are you thinking? Well, if they're right around the corner from my office, no, they were far away. And I was like, I just can't, I'm sorry, I'm booked for weeks and I just can't accommodate that. And so I started referring clients out because I know what my limitations are. I no longer shove clients in that little 45 minute spot. I cross that off my calendar and I take that time because I know if not, I'm going to burn out. I'm going to be miserable. I'm going to be of no use to my partner, to my clients, to anything else. Um, So recognizing your limitations, I think is huge. And being that I spent so many years building a business overachieving. I'm not a pleaser, but I'm definitely a hyperachiever. Um, I find my validation through doing, which is, I'm trying to shift that. <laughs> you know, and so many people do. And it's like, I'm finally recognizing, you know, I can take time off. Uh, and today, you know, you and I adjust our recording schedule because I was starting to feel burnt out. And I'm like, I need that extra hour in the morning. And you and I recognize when we call each other and go, dude, I, I can't fucking do it right now. You know, we recognize, okay. And I was <laughs> very grateful for that, by the way, because I, I could use work. the extra hour of sleep as well. Right. So. That's why you're like, enjoy your hours. I'm like, you too. Um, so it's important to, to recognize that. And one of the things that really helped me is I looked at my butt, you know, real numbers make sense, right? So I looked at my budget. I looked at how much money I had to make. I looked at how many clients that meant. And I know that if I see a certain number of clients, that is the minimum that I need to do. Anything over that's gravy. So if I have a client or two that cancels, rather than getting into this lack mentality of, I'm not going to have enough, I count how many clients and I go, 
I still have five over my minimum. Why am I freaking out? And then it becomes my choice as to whether I put someone in that spot or whether I head to the beach with my boyfriend or whether I meditate or whether I work on my continuing ed or my book that I'm writing, or I get to choose what to do at that time. But knowing what I needed to make actually really turned that around for me because I didn't have that self-employed panic of, oh, I'm failing. <laughs> you know, it's I'm like, going to be able to pay taxes the end I of the know. week or whatever. Oh, God. Yeah. It's like, ask that, you know, what do you know to be true? I have plenty of money. I have plenty of clients. Figure that out for yourself. How much you, you know, and that's for an, that's for a self-employed person. If you work for somebody else, it's a little harder. Well, it's a little different, but I, but I think it's also, it's, you know, again, because most of us, I know you and I are in this overachiever uh, state, right? And we've we've conditioned ourselves to thinking that checking shit off my list means I'm important or it means I'm doing something, right? I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it really doesn't. And and a lot of times we just have to stop and put things in perspective, right? Yeah. So it's like there there was something that I've you know, I've got a few things that I carry forward on my, my list, right? I use a sauna kind of for like, mm -hmm. you know, to do kind of stuff and projects and things that we're working on. And, and there's some stuff that I'll, I'll carry forward, right? Because it's like, you know, that's a really good idea. And I should do that. But after a while, right, I have to once I've drugged that forward for four to six weeks, or whatever, you need to kind of stop and go, is that really something that I'm going to do yep, or that is that important. Uh, and sometimes I just cross them off, right? Yep. It was a good idea. I never got to it. Probably not that big a deal. Right. On, on the flip side too, you know, it's like I could work 16 hours a day. I can yep. always find something to do, but you know, if I don't get back to that person until the end of the week, if you know i choose to to go outside for an hour and just walk around or just lay in the grass or whatever i'm gonna do yep. is it really that big a deal in the grand scheme of life right. and it's usually not yeah. right nobody gets to the end of their life and goes ah oh, damn it i wish i would have made you know, hundred thousand dollars more than I made, or I, mm -hmm. I wish I would have worked more than I worked. Yeah. It's yep. usually regret on the other side. So why push that stuff off and realize that, you know, Hey, if you only work 20 hours this week and you work 60 hours next week, that's okay too. Yeah. Right. Uh, if, if you feel like, I mean, there's, there's sometimes that physically, I just don't feel that well. Yeah. And I know I can't do certain things and I just have to take it easy, uh -huh. you know, for it, for a day or for part of a day. And what ends up happening, I mean, this happened to me last week. I mean, I woke up one morning, not feeling so good. I don't, I don't get sick, Yeah, yeah. but, but I just, I just wasn't cognitively there, uh -huh. right? There was some energetic things that were going on and I just kind of fell out of it for the morning but all of a sudden you know so I was just patient with myself and yep. kind of took it slow did what I could do and then all of a sudden it was around somewhere between 12 and 2 o'clock all of a sudden it was almost like this switch flipped <laughs> in me and it's like oh now I feel really good <sighs> and I go yep. back to doing what I'm doing right and and realize that that's that's normal in our cyclical yes. nature uh, and I didn't need to beat myself up for that morning. Yeah. I still and, got everything done yep. that I needed to. And that is such a great point because I don't think we honor those natural cycles of our own energy and recognizing, you know, there's this thing, the tyranny, the urgent, it has to be done right now. And I remember a couple of weeks ago, Eric and I had gone down to Los Angeles. I'm in this amazing hotel. He's doing something on his computer. I'm out laying by the pool. And it's like, oh, I should probably be working. And da, da, da. it's Sunday at 1030 in the morning. It's like, why do I need to be working? You're going to go home and work. You're here at this great hotel that you paid money for laying by the pool, which you're enjoying. You're kind of meditating. You're just, you know, spending time in your own head. Like, why, do, why would I go sit in the hotel room and work when I can work 
once I get home or tomorrow, you know, during normal business hours. So I think it's giving yourself permission. And I've started like handing out permission slips at my talks, giving yourself permission to have a fuck off day or take the morning off or to play a video game instead of doing the homework that you were supposed to do. Now, don't let go get too carried away. <laughs> we do want to make sure the work gets done. But if you find yourself 30 days later and yeah. you're in your basement playing video games with Cheetos and you, you haven't showered moved. and like the cat is missing and you don't, yeah, it's a whole scenario. Uh, you know, giving yourself permission to take that time though, I think is really important and something we don't often do. And for those pleasers out there, because there is a difference between Jason and I with the hyperachieving, finding our identity that way, and the pleasers who find that identity by helping people and by always being available. If you're one of those people who says yes because you feel obligated to because of guilt or shame or obligation, try to find a way to start saying no to things. And maybe you have to start out small uh, you know, and just say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You don't have to say why. You don't have to give them any explanation then other than, I'm sorry, this doesn't fit into my schedule or whatever the situation is. And recognizing that you're not saying no to the person. You're not rejecting the person. You're saying no to that thing they are asking you to do. Um, and on the flip side of that, also reaching out for help is so important. And I have a lot of clients that have trouble with that too. They don't want to admit they need help or they need more time. Uh, you know, if they say it was going to be done by one and if something happens and it's not done by one, they will feel horrible rather than communicating and say, look, my intention was to get that to you by one. I ran into this snag, this snag, this snag. I'll have it to you by three. Communicate all of that. I think that's the other thing that gets us in trouble is we don't communicate our needs. We don't communicate status. We don't communicate those things that are actually going on. And that tends to get us in more trouble than saying no. So there's a couple more little tips thrown out there. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Cause I know, and, 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 you know, again, it's okay to take a little break sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. I love that idea of the permission slips. Um, you know, there's a little takeaway everybody can do, right? Just go make yourself some, some little permission slips, write them out and put them next to your desk. And when you're feeling like it, it's like, I'm going to take this one that says, I'm just going to go for a walk right now. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. Right. And off you go. Cause again, taking that half hour, hour break, it's still going to be there. And it's going right? to make you more productive. It's going to make you more productive too. Yeah. Yep. Good stuff. Good cool. stuff. All right, everyone, go take a break. Go take a break. Yeah. Well, we Just should like, go take a break. I think we probably should. We should. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most contrived ending ever. <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, you have to give yourself permission to do that. Recognize why you say yes to everything. Are you just over, are you overachieving? Is that how you were raised? Is that your guilt? Is that fear? Is it, what is it? If you can identify why you do it, then you can help make changes for that. So knowledge is power. That's my last thought on that. Exactly. Cool. Well, I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Meffer. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, take a little break. I think I'm going to go take a little break right now, too, before my next call. So uh, have a great week. And we will catch you on the next episode of the Fire Earth Podcast. We'll see you. See ya.